All right, everybody, welcome to today's Tech Talk Tuesday. In today's video, we're coming at you from inside my 1972 Dodge Challenger because we're gonna give you an overview on what's involved in doing the configuration calibration of the Dakota Digital RTX gauges. I've got my instruction manual right here from Dakota Digital, so we can walk you through and show you what's all involved in going through this process. Now, I've already gone through and started setting this stuff up, and it's super easy and straightforward, and it works out really well, and there's a lot of customization you can do. There are a couple of things that I'm not super excited about, but that goes with the, with the territory of being a Mopar owner. Overall though, it's super easy and works really well. Now, the biggest problem I have is the fuel sending uh, setup. The fuel sender system has 10 different presets in it from Dakota Digital, and unfortunately, Mopar isn't one of them. Uh, that is my only real complaint about this entire system at this point, is that considering this is a Mopar system and they have almost a dozen Mopar systems available, you would think that one of the presets they would put in their brain box is a Mopar factory fuel uh, sending unit. Unfortunately, that's not the case. They've got some that are uh, kind of close, but overall, they don't have one that fits the Mopar lineup. So that doesn't mean you're out of luck and gonna have a fuel gauge that's misreading. It just means you have to go through an extra step of pulling your fuel sending unit out of the gas tank and manually setting the resistance levels within the uh, configuration unit to get your gauge to work properly. Uh, it's a little extra step, it's a little annoying, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. And if that's the biggest problem of this system, that's not that bad at all. And as being Mopar people, we're used to having stuff like this uh, happen to us. It's just the name of the game and how things work. So I'm not heartbroken over it. Is it gonna cost me a little extra time to go ahead and get the fuel gauge working properly? Yeah, but at the end of the day, I only have to do it once and then it's done. So everything else though works out really well. I mean, all you have to do to uh, set up the system is you push down the toggle switch that you mount uh, on the dash, you hold it in place, turn the key to the on position, and then follow this setup on uh, the screen for the speedometer. It'll tell you uh, setup mode, and once it does, go ahead and release the button, and then you can go through and toggle through all of the different uh, parameters for each of the gauges, get everything set up the way you want. You can go ahead and then uh, after you go through all of those different settings, get everything dialed in, you can go through and set up things like your whether you want the gauges backlit during the day or not. Uh, I went ahead and set them up to be backlit during the day on mine uh, because I think it looks really uh, great. And then I also went ahead and set the night uh, lights to a different color. I set them to blue to match the car. And so I've got two different light settings. So you can have a day setting and a night setting. And then you can also go ahead and adjust the brightness of the lights within the uh, system as well. Uh, or if you option to order the additional dimmer switch, you can wire that in and have the manual uh, brightness adjustment as well. I went ahead, I did order the dimmer switch. I didn't install it though, uh, because the knob didn't match the factory one. Uh, and since you can do the adjustment within the uh, system itself, I just went ahead and did the setup there and not worry about it. Uh, but I do have the dimmer switch if I want to wire it in later. Uh, but for now, I'm totally content with not uh, having that in there. And everything else is really straightforward and the instructions are super helpful. Walk you right through the process step by step and show you everything that you need to know and dial the car in. And of course, you can also go in there and set the odometer reading. So that way it matches what your old instrument cluster was that you pulled out of the car. And so everything is, is really simple, straightforward, and it doesn't take much time at all to do the configuration. I still need to go and take the car out for a drive to do the calibration of the speedometer, uh, but it looks like there are a couple different ways to do that in the instruction manuals as well. And it seems really straightforward and shouldn't take that much time at all. And then the clock, that's also easy to go ahead and set up the instructions. Like, I, like they've been throughout the entire process, have been rock solid on getting everything dialed in and easy to configure. So if you're on the fence on whether or not you wanna go ahead and switch these Dakota digital gauges because you're afraid of the wiring or the configuration effort, calibration effort, 
don't be afraid from that standpoint because like I said in my previous video on the wiring, it's super easy to wire, super straightforward, and the configuration of the gauges is easier than the wiring is and it's just really simple. Dakota Digital did an amazing job with this setup. I couldn't be happier with it other than the fuel sender issue that I mentioned earlier. But again, that's not a deal breaker. We're used to that in the Mopar community. It would have been nice since they've got 10 presets, but since they don't have the preset for us Mopars, we can do the manual setup and get it dialed in that way. And that'll work just fine as well. So that's today's video. I hope you found this video uh, information useful as always. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Give me that thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you wanna kept up to date on all my future videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well. So that way YouTube will keep you up to date of all the videos I do in the future. And as always guys, I will see you the next video.